Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian to homeschool mom. And in this video, I'm going to look at the film hidden figures. Now I've done uh, two previous videos, one on the picture book and one on the original novel of which this movie is loosely kind of based. Um, yeah, it's where it gets its title from and kind of, kind of covers some of it. Yeah, this movie has problems, lots of problems. Um, now, first off, it's brilliantly acted, it's brilliantly shot, but uh, the um, writing sucks, and they screwed a lot of stuff up. Now, a lot of, being white, I'm not going to get into um, a lot of the, uh, what we would call, and what I've heard called watching other videos on different things, even this one. Uh, where they do the white savior stuff. Um, but that's, the whole Kevin Costner thing is funny. It's just bizarre. One, it never happened. It, his character doesn't exist. It, it's based off a bunch of white supervisors. Uh, and the whole bathroom giant running back and forth thing. It's ridiculous. It never happened. Uh, the other stuff happened that they don't put in the movie. Uh, something close to this happened to somebody else. But this whole thing never happened. So we're going to kind of get into this. And again, as I said, um, Kevin Costner, though a brilliant actor, as is Jim Pearson's, they are playing composite characters. So Costner's character represents a lot of the white, very straight-laced, women are here, men are here kind of typical hierarchical men. And so it's a composite of a bunch of these different white supervisors. And Jim Pearson's character is again another composite of a bunch of basically the white scientists who were interacting with these women. So neither one of these characters exists. Um, the same with Kirsten Dunst's character. Again, this is a composite of, she represents the white women's attitude to an extent because they did have the, you had the separation of the East and West computers early on. Um, and basically her uh, character represents that. I do not know, there may have been white supervisors in the um, West computers, but at the time, I believe Dorothy Vaughn reported to a man, uh, not a woman, but uh, she was the supervisor, essentially one of the major supervisors for the West computers by the time some of these events take place. Now, the film, does not start with the same place the book starts. The book starts during World War II with Dorothy Vaughn, um, who had been there. They were working. This is not NASA. This was the National um, Air, uh, Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, so the NACA, which was the precursor to NASA. And the book starts with her career, literally the first 10 chapters of the book covering the, essentially the war years and kind of the early post-war years. Um, the film jumps right over that. And it jumps into, by the time both Mary Jackson and Katherine Johnson were there, which was uh, around the, by the time both of them were there, it was getting close to the mid-1950s. So it is also unlikely they all would have all driven to work together. Uh, they knew each other. They went to church together. But Vaughn was the supervisor, and she was older, I believe. Um, and again, she, they barely worked together. Vaughn was the both girls' supervisor for a brief period of time before both of them branched off uh, Jackson to the wind tunnels and uh, Johnson to, I can't remember, I have to go back to my, let me do a double check on my book review here, which tells me where on earth Katherine Johnson was. She was working in the flight research division. So that's where she was at. So she was, they were barely working with Vaughn. And Vaughn was the supervisor there before she moved into uh, when the West computers closed, working somewhere with some of the uh, uh, computer programming, because that's what she began to specialize in. So the film kind of messes that up. Now, as I said previously, the whole white savior thing going on there with Kevin Costner didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. Uh, and they had uh, quite a few missed opportunities. One of the ones I mentioned this in my book review that I find absolutely hilarious has to do with Dorothy Vaughn and Katherine Johnson. So Katherine Johnson gets there. She's 
she's maybe working under Vaughn for about a month before she's sent to the flight research division, and they proceed to keep her for the next five months. So that's her probationary period. So Vaughn gets irritated, shows up at the boss's office. I believe the guy's name was Pearson, and eventually sort of kind of tells him politely off. So it's essentially, you her basically, this is my computer. You either need to give her back because her probationary period is over or promote her and basically permanently assign her. And she did this knowing that's exactly what he would do because he wasn't going to, basically his crew liked her. She was doing really good work because Johnson was very, very good at math. Um, and so she, and she did this not only for Johnson, but for a white computer who was uh, sent there about the same time. And she says, you need to do, essentially do this for both women, which they did. And that was kind of, if you're thinking this is, uh, Johnson got there in like 53. So this is 1953, a black woman going head to head with a white supervisor during the time of major segregation, the early parts of the civil rights movement, and essentially telling him what to do. And he does it, mind you, because that was policy at the time. And he likes his, basically his people were required, were uh, leaning on Johnson and possibly this other computer to do this. The other one has to do with where they took the bathroom hole situation from the original story. It had nothing to do with Catherine uh, Johnson, uh, if I remember the book correctly. Catherine Johnson was using the white bathrooms for like two years before anybody noticed, and then she didn't care. <laughs> so, and she kept on doing it. The, what happened was actually to Mary Jackson. And what the story is she was sent to the east side to do something, some sort of computer work. And everything's going fine until she needs to go to the bathroom. And she asked the other women, all the white women, this is on the east side where the uh, east computers are, where the bathroom was. And they kind of humiliate, they laugh at her essentially. There's no, none of your computer, there's none of your bathrooms on this side. So she marches, has to go all the way back to the west side to go to the bathroom. She comes out of the bathroom and she runs into a man by the name of, and I'm going to mispronounce him, I probably did it in my uh, book review, Kosmaraz Sozinski, who is called Kaz. Now he is a um, assistant for the 4x4 uh, supersonic wind tunnels. And she comes out, now normally, as the book explains, that particularly at the time, blacks put on a different face for when they were interacting with the whites. They essentially, they put on a mask and behave very, very differently. For some reason that day, Mary Jackson, was just, she was just too angry and she dropped her mask and complained to him. His reaction was, come work for me. So that was the entire bathroom thing. She had to march across once to go to the bathroom, not angry, uh, uncharacteristically uh, complained to a white man, and he just says, come work for me. And that's essentially what happened. And then it is, um, the film briefly covers this, uh, where, uh, and this is something they missed out on actually going into detail. So Jackson went and got, uh, had to fight for permission, both from uh, from Hampton City, the uh, surrounding basically town, to take these advanced math classes that she needed to do in order to become an engineer. And she I, she went to Pearson, I believe was the name of the uh, supervisor uh, in charge, and essentially fought to take these classes. And she did become one of the first African American women engineers at Langley Labs. So they kind of missed out. They covered that briefly, but they kind of missed out. They also missed out on the actual bathroom thing with what actually happened uh, with Mary Jackson, rather than the whole weird thing with Kevin Costner breaking down a sign and doing strange things. Yeah, it just, and the character playing Katherine Johnson running back and forth in the rain doing mathematics. Yeah, again, never happened. Uh, it was just kind of ridiculous when you think about some of the other stuff that actually did. And in coming to the white savior moment, I mean, basically, you just I just explained one uh, with Jackson, basically, this brief interaction where her mask came off and she ranted and he 
literally even the book, it's very nonchalantly. It's like, why don't you just come work for me? And so she did. And she became uh, one of the best, one of the engineers working on those supersonic wind tunnels, which were vital to the space program and the flight in how they, uh, even possibly even the creation of the space shuttle on how things flew and how to get these rockets safely into space and how things reacted. The other story that they kind of missed out on um, had to do with Katherine Johnson. This is a really well-known story. It shows up in the picture books um, where, now remember, uh, this is the dawn of uh, the big computers. So a lot of the men, uh, particularly the pilots, were used to computers being human, particularly human being, human women. And they didn't necessarily trust these newfangled computers. So John Glenn, who you should know, they sent him into space when he was older. He was the first guy to orbit the Earth. He did not trust the computer's uh, printout of the, tra the trajectory, basically, where he was going to land when he came back. It's like, you shoot me. Shoot me in a rocket off here. I'm going to circle the Earth. And where am I going to land? He didn't trust what the computer said. He trusts Katherine Johnson. He literally told them, have the girl check the numbers. And if she says she agrees with him, I'm good to go. So remember, and I mentioned this in my book review, this is a white, young white pilot trusting an African-American young woman over a computer in the 1950s with his life. I mean, uh, one, the exposed program, I mean, these guys were putting their lives on the line, as is evidence what happened with Project Mercury. They did, um, people did die. I mean, heck, they still die with the space shuttle. Every time one of these guys goes, these people go up into space. They're risking their lives because there's a lot of fuel involved and a lot of explosions. But he trusted her with his life because where he landed, because again, they were dropping into the ocean in these little space capsules, it, they had to be able to be picked up. And if they couldn't be found, they would, these, these little rockets would sink. I mean, they're not going to stay floating forever and they would get stuck. So he trusted her to tell them with the math, okay, I'm going to be shooting off here and landing here at this time. You're looking at not only all sorts of uh, calculations going in here from where they're taking off to the weather patterns and how things are changing and even water currents and being able to figure out, okay, where am I going to be so I can be picked up? So he was really trusting her with his life. And I think that that's an amazing story. They didn't really cover that. The other thing they kind of did different because once again, they're trying to be dramatic. Johnson and other women were actually uh, in the control center. They stayed in Langley. Johnson in particular, I believe she was offered a chance to go to Houston or Cape Canaveral, but she refused because she had a life. She had remarried, she had daughters, she had community. And a lot of, some of the younger women did. Um, they went and moved on. And that's the, one of the other stories. It kind of is a white savior moment that actually happened that had to do with, did I cover, yeah, reports. So Katherine Johnson, was the one of the first women to have her name officially on one of these, uh, I think it was a trajectory report. Um, basically the mathematics, the printouts and the trajectories and all the science. So they would send out these, basically these reports, this was their work. And most of the time the women's names weren't on them. Well, this was around the time they were going to Houston and they were really getting into shooting men into space. And one of the men that Katherine Johnson was working, Ted, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, Soposky, he was too busy to finish this report. And his boss, Henry Pearson, kept saying, you need to get this in. And he's like, I don't have time. Uh, let Katherine finish it. She basically put her name on it as the author's favor. She's done most of the work anyway. And that's what happened. Uh, basically, Soposky, again, I'm mispronouncing his name, essentially pushed his boss. Uh, again, this is the same white woman that Vaughn went up against. His wife was a stay-at-home mother. He believed women in their place. Pushed him into just letting her, it's like her uh, name be on that report. She was also one of the first women in their meetings. 
she pressured them to let her in so she could hear what was going on besides just typing in the numbers. So that was kind of a white savior moment. If you, I mean, that actually happened. This guy said, it's like, I'm busy. I'm busy trying to focus on this other stuff and what's going on in Houston to do what we they've been doing before, which is the preliminary work. And she's doing all the work anyway. So she had basically deserved to have her name on the work on the paper because again, she was doing most of the work was her. So, and that's how it happened. She became the first female author on a report that came out of the aerospace mechanics division, which is where she was working. So they missed out on that. They also kind of, they, you see it a little bit, it's more dramatic size of how Vaughn taught herself and a lot of the other women the computer language. They did cover this. It's kind of an interesting story. What they kind of missed was the fact that Dorothy Vaughn was a single mother at the time. Yeah, uh, through most of her career, she was a single mother. Uh, no outward things happened. Essentially, her husband worked the uh, hotel circuit and he was primarily visiting his family in Farmville. And they probably just grew apart. She was raising, I believe, six children <laughs> in Hampton, Virginia by herself. And she was doing that anyway because he wasn't really around. So I think they divorced. I'm not sure why, but she did a lot of this as a single mom. But again, she had this huge community around her as well. The African community in that area was very close. You had a lot of, and it was growing. You had a lot of these women computers and scientists coming in as particularly as time went on. And the film doesn't really, you don't really see that much. Uh, they do a lot of the drama with what's going on with Johnson, a little bit of what's going on with Jackson, and some of the stuff with Vaughn. Why, of course, the book is huge, and it covers literally from the 1930s into the epilogue happens in the 1970s. It also skips over another woman that they don't really touch on. The book touches on her a little bit. She's the next generation, and the, uh, I really learned about her when looking at the picture book, and that is, I'm going to go back up to, is, uh, Kristen Mann Darden, Dr. Kristen Mann Darden, who was friends with one of Dawn's, uh, Vaughn's daughters. And she became an expert in the sonic boom. She came in uh, and started working at NASA in 67. And she was very, I don't, she was kind of mentored a little bit by, uh, she became really good friends with Katherine Johnson. And that was kind of the next generation. Uh, but the film kind of, it doesn't touch on that. It really focuses on Katherine Johnson and weird conflicts going on, and then showing them shooting people into space while they're there, which, uh, again, they were not in Houston at the time. They were still in Langley. Pretty sure Pearson was still in Langley, and he was probably the best, closest thing to Kevin Costner's character. But again, he was, this was, again, a composite because there was a few other people involved. So, and see if there's anything else they really got wrong. Um, not really. They kind of missed over, uh, Catherine, uh, Vaughn, basically the West computers, uh, closing there. I don't, as far as I can tell from the book, if I remember correctly, they show a conflict between Vaughn and, uh, Kirsten Dunn's character didn't happen. I mean, mostly the people in charge were men, not women. It was more of the kind of snubby attitude of the, uh, East East End computers, and like the West End, eventually they were all disbanded and essentially sent to the four corners of the lab. So I'm not sure if I remember correctly if these if Vaughn Johnson uh, uh, Jackson were close. They knew obviously they knew each other. They were all in the same community, but they didn't really work together. I can the film kind of glosses that over just a little bit, and I think that's it. Again, the film was. It, it's good, but uh, you hate to say this, particularly even as a white woman, it was geared toward, toward a white audience. It skims over a lot of stuff. It skims over a lot of the civil rights stuff that was going on um, at the time and uh, narrows in on some very strange things that never actually happened and glosses over some of the uh, actual conflicts that happened or the actual interactions these women had with the white the primarily white male scientists and how they worked to uh, pave the way for the next generation, which was uh, Darden and her colleagues. In fact, uh, in the actual history, and I found this by skimming the um, picture book, 
uh, Jackson, near the end of her career, moved into the personnel area in order to help bring these next generation of women into the fold and move on to the next generation of these uh, female, particularly these African-American female mathematicians. And they were amazing. And so that's kind of the, the film, why it highlights some of it, it, it misses the mark because it focuses on this weird drama with bathroom signs and uh, other strange things and standing up to white men, uh, which didn't exactly happen, kind of happened. It was far more subtle because, you know, life. And this was a professional environment. There wasn't going to be breaking down of signs. It was just very, very weird. The only other thing that was closely um, happened that was similar to taking down of signs actually happened earlier in the 30s uh, with Vaughn uh, and the women she was working with early on where there was, because they were the only uh, black professionals at the time were these African-American women and were the only ones who were eating um, in the cafeteria. There was, they were assigned a table in a place where there was really no assigned tables and they would basically, there was a sign on there for colored women and one of them kept stealing it and putting it in her purse until they gave up. So that was, that was mentioned in the book and it was kind of funny. And it would have been interesting to put in the film, but at least as a flashback kind of thing. Because again, the film really focuses on that, focuses on things when they've gotten to NASA, as opposed to the earlier stuff. Because again, the first, uh, Johnson, Vaughn, and Jackson started working with the National Aeronautics Committee for the precursor to NASA. And then they were kind of moved in like everybody else. Uh, into working with NASA and when NASA took over the labs. Um, and they, so that's pretty much it. Um, let's see if there's anything else in my notes here. Uh, no, uh, besides the fact that Vaughn was, and they kind of glossed over this a little bit, hidden it up um, in the programming section of the and, and of analysis and computing division at Langley. That's where she looks like she ended her career. Um, but that's pretty much it. The film is beautifully shot. It's wonderfully acted, but it's a shadow compared to the book and essentially even to the uh, children's picture book that really does more of an in-depth look at NASA history and the history of the space program and they play to the drama. And again, I hate to say this, but it really was um, playing to white audiences as opposed to African-American audiences, which uh, it worked. I mean, it, it's a well-known film. The great thing it did, it brought, it brought attention to these women. It brought attention to the work that they did and hopefully encouraged more people to look at the book or look uh, at these women in history because they were these women played a vital part in a variety of things of women's history, of the history of African Americans, of the history of computing, uh, and the history of aeronautics and space flight and flight in general. So these women were vital to the early uh, era of all of these things, and they were part of it. And it's good for them. It's good to know. Um, another note on uh, where the title came from. And I talked about this in my both my book reviews on the uh, children's book as well as the uh, original novel. The title came from the fact that the author of the book, I'll go back up to my top of my notes here, was uh, Margaret Lee Shutterly. She grew up in the area. Um, she grew up knowing these women. I believe uh, Vaughn was her Sunday school teacher, and she never knew. She never knew what these women did and their role in this mass amount of history until she was an adult. And she had come home with her husband and was talking to her parents, I believe in the cars, how the um, frame the author frames in her book. And her father brings it up. I don't know, in the course of conversation, and it's very much a what moment. She's like, they did what? And that's how this history came out. And she chose to, she got a grant and everything to study and tell the story of these amazing women and their amazing contributions to history and the science uh, of 
computers and aeronautics and flight. And it's, it's, they're amazing stories to tell. Um, as I mentioned in my book review, I'm going to try to cover a few more of the children's books uh, about these characters. I also have, um, looking into the more uh, prominent women in STEM, I have a children's book on another amazing woman, which is, uh, whose name I can't remember, besides the fact that she was a rear admiral. She's a woman who came up with the term bugging. Uh, so, and she, I believe she has a um, National Medal of Honor. And so does um, uh, Johnson. Uh, Catherine Johnson does as well. But uh, they had major contributions. And this film at least sheds a little bit of light on it, hopefully encourages people to look up these women and look into a few more things. And again, it sheds light on the fact that even I was told that there are not, women are not good at math and not good at science. And this film, uh, and hopefully others based on some of these women, says, um, yeah, no, sorry, uh, women are very much in the forefront of computing and math and science. And these women are very, very intelligent. I mean, most, uh, Katherine Johnson, I think he, Jackson and Vaughn all graduated from high school at like 16. Uh, so, and they went on, they studied mathematics and physics and did amazing, amazing things. And it's good to know about them. It's, this film kind of sheds a light on it, even if a little strangely, again, they do some weird, weird drama thing. Again, it was, however, it was acted fantastically. The African-American actors, which for some reason I did not note here, uh, they did a fantastic job. They are fantastic actresses, all of them. Um, the only reason I had brought up Costner and uh, Pearson's is because their characters didn't exist. Eventually, they were composites, and I noted that the women, obviously, who played them, uh, played Johnson, Jackson, and uh, Vaughn, did exist. I do not believe they brought Darden into it. It's been a while since I've seen the film. Again, I have a toddler. I don't actually get to watch movies these <laughs> these days. So, but that was Hidden Figures, the film. Uh, I would recommend it to an extent if you're looking at it, particularly if you have high school kids and you kind of want to do a compare to the actual history versus what the film does, or if you're looking on about looking into the concept of white saviors and how that differs from actual history that happens. Um, I've watched a few uh, videos. Uh, I think the one that first alerted me to this was by, I think it's an It's Lit episode by a YouTuber called Princess Weeks, who is African-American, and she kind of covers this a little bit. This was kind of a subsidiary of PBS where it looks at this. And that's where I first heard it. And yeah, it really does apply to this film because they do some very interesting nonsense, which again, I find very, very funny because if you want to put white savior moments into it, you have what happened with Jackson and, uh, why I'm going to mispronounce this guy's name multiple times. Uh, where is it here? Yeah. Kosmoraz Sazinski. Or what happened with Katherine Johnson and John Glenn, for God's sake. Or even the interactions with Vaughn and I believe his, I believe this was uh, Henry Pearson is who she interacted with. Or even the what happened with uh, John, Katherine Johnson and the whole report thing. And here I'll go down, I think, what was the name of the person she was interacting with? Ted Subzinski. If you wanted white savior moments, all of these things actually happened. You could put them in your film if you want to get a hooked on a white audience, but they chose not to. They chose to play up some very, very strange drama. Um, but again, it would be a great film if you're kind of looking at that and you're looking at that kind of film studies things, or I'm not sure it's not, I wouldn't recommend it as a historical film because it's not. They do a little bit too much fiction and fiddling around here. Um, again, it's a great compare and contrast if you want to compare the book and actual events to the dramatization. Again, this is kind of more of a film studies thing or uh, looking at compare and contrast essays, uh, particularly for high school students, something that I love doing 
just because I find it interesting, like, uh, particularly when it comes to these weird historical things and how they screw them up. They do that a lot. They do that a lot. But that is going to be it for this review. If you like what you see, you can check out my review of the fit of the books, both the picture and the adult books. I have a bunch of other book reviews, some homeschool stuff. But if you like this, like and subscribe. And that's it. Thank you.